Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warcraft, and especially welcome back to Ice Crown. Yes, I have Shadow's Edge on my back. I am wearing the full set from ICC, and of course I am on Invincible. And why are we here again? Because we are going to look to finish the quest line that I've been working on for quite some time. Um, on this current step, the Splintered Throne, which I believe might be the final step I need to finish this off. This was given to me by High Lord Darian Mograine. The Lich King's throne once served as his prison. Killed Jaden himself crafted the vessel of icy crystals from the twisting nether. Its sole purpose to hold Ner'zhul's vengeful spirit. When Arthas struck the crystal with Frostmourne, he released Ner'zhul's soul, allowing it to merge with his own. Splinters from that impact are now scattered throughout the Citadel. I shall require those shards, held only by the Lich King's most powerful servants, to seal the power contained in your blade. So... Let me kind of this go, let you know how this works. So, first off, this is only available because I believe it's not available to hunters, even though people keep telling me hunters can wield two-handed weapons, like two-handed axes or two-handed swords. Um, but I've never heard of a hunter being able to get this quest line. But maybe they can. I don't know. As far as I know, it's only been available because it's only been listed as available on sites like WoW and such when I was looking up the quest line to paladins, warriors, Death Knights. This is a two-handed axe. This is a quest line for a legendary weapon, a two-handed axe known as Shadowmorn. It's supposed to be this the quote-unquote sister weapon of Frostmorn. Yes, that Frostmorn. It is actually supposed to uh, look somewhat similar to this axe right here. And you basically have to go through this raid on one of those classes. And as you're destroying mobs, you get rep for the faction here. Uh, let me show it to you here. Yeah, the Ashen Verdict. And once you get to Friendly, you get the you can go to Darien Mograine, who's in here in the starting area, and get your first quest for the quest line. And then you follow the steps, um, which a few of them involve basically getting what you need to make this weapon, then get bring it, taking it with you throughout the raid in order to infuse it with the um, the three different specs of, um, you know, a Death Knight, Unholy, Blood, and Frost. Let me tell you right now, the Unholy one was really annoying to do. I basically had to bring one more person in order to do it. The Blood one was even worse because it basically required three or four people to do like if you can get four people it's even better like the more people you have to do this the better it was yeah the the annoying part is make you know trying to get people to be willing to come and just kind of stand there and while you do that quest line involving the uh biting so the frost one was easy where you just stand there and you you know and let Cindragosa just breathe on you and uh then we did this. So I got up to 49 of 50. So I thought I would share with you guys my attempt to finish this off. And it says here that you can only get shards in the 25 person difficulty. So I have to set the 25 normal instead of 25 heroic. One, because I pretty much have almost everything you can get from 25 heroic, including invincible as you saw. Uh, and I think there are still some 25 normal transmogs I don't have. So, we'll just do this on 25 normal. Now, I will say, if you're still farming for Invincible, definitely do this on 25 heroic. Because the higher the difficulty, the more chance you have of those shards dropping from each of the different bosses. So, just to remind you, um, when you come in here on either a Paladin, Death Knight, or Warrior, just clear out all, you know, clear out as much of the trash as you can. Pay attention to the Ashen Verdict rep, you ha rep that you have, and when it gets up to friendly, then you can come over here 
and talk to Darian Mulgrain. If you highlight him, you should see this exclamation point over him, and that will start you on this quest line. You can check if you can do it on a wart on, on a on a wart, on a hunter. Again, I don't know if you can actually do it on a hunter or not. But I do know you can do this on these. And if you're wondering why did I choose my paladin instead of my either my death knight or my warrior, it's because of those three, the paladin is the only one who can heal. And I wanted to take advantage of this boss down here, Valithria, because she counts and she had you know she can be able to drop extra loot. She can also drop those shards. So that was basically my idea. So let's go ahead. This is our final go step. Through here. What happens here will echo through the ages. Regardless of outcome, they will know that we fought with honor. That we fought for the freedom and safety of our people. Remember, heroes, fear is your greatest enemy in these beast foul halls. Steal your heart, and rain. your soul will shine brighter than a thousand suns. It's too far away. The enemy will falter at the sight of it. Fall as the light of righteousness envelops them. Our march upon Ice Crown Citadel begins now. I'm hearing that whisper because I'm using sh uh, this weapon right here, Shadow's Edge. The scourge. The light won't protect you. And I love that. Nothing will protect you. Arthur. I never get tired of hearing this whole. I swore that I would see you dead in the scourge dismantled. With the Lich King I'm going to finish what I started at Light's Hope. It's too far away. But then again, I hardly ever get tired of anything so of so going this raid ever. A force of darkness that will wash over this world and deliver it into a new way. This of is the beginning and the end, mortals. The scale to the mass will light up by this world as a swore of death and destruction. Male atrocities I have committed upon him. He has resisted for so long, but he will bow down before his king soon. That took forever to drop, by the way. Never! I will never serve you! The Paladin still lives? Is it possible, High Lord? Could I want to talk, survived? but I don't want to talk over this. The power of the light knows no bounds, Sarfang. His soul is under you great strain. You have found your he way lives. here! But because now, you are among the few gifted with true vision in a world cursed with blindness. You fortress, what is this disturbance? The gates of this world like a shroud trespass upon and this hell of ground. This shall be your life and message in my own hand. The next hands. will answer his cries, and we will Interrupt. save High Lord Bolvar Fortress. Interrupt. Interrupt. Oh, Interrupt. Oh, part of the master plan. Your end Champions, is inevitable. Our will find a point to dock on the upper reaches of the Citadel. Meet us there. Okay, now that they've finished talking, there actually is something I do want to talk about because it came to my mind when I was hearing the Lich King talk. So I'm recording this. After, well, for one thing, after we made, a, made our move and I've gotten my new setup and stuff. But also, I'm recording this after the events of this past year's BlizzCon. Um, this may be a good time for me to talk about what happened in regards to the announcement of the new expansion, Shadowlands. So, you know, by the way, we're just going through this until I am able to acquire a shard and then we'll try and turn this in. I'll be, I guess I'll be blunt with you guys. When I first saw that cinematic while watching the opening ceremonies, I was not happy. I was not happy at all. And it had nothing to do necessarily the with the expansion the itself. 
Rise because up, then I saw the... And daughters of the horse. Today we battle a hated enemy of the horde. Loktar Ogar. Korkron, take us out. I'll have to find some time to just stop and just talk. But I also don't want to just kind of sit here and waste time. What is that? Something approaching in the distance. It's a stupid boss battle. Five, because we shouldn't be fighting four, each other in ICC. Three, two, one. I knew to get closer. You dare board my ship? Your death will come swiftly. You will know our business soon. Corcron, annihilate them! Come on. Hey, there it is. I have all 50. Just before the Sour Fang fight. All right, so let's go downstairs. Let's head back. All right, so maybe I should continue my thoughts here. So... Later I watched the panels about what they were going to be doing with the Shadowlands expansion. And I gotta say, I'm excited about it. There are a lot of things about the gameplay and how it's going to work and function and the features and the even the level squish and the leveling changes and such that I'm like, wow, this sounds really good. I'm actually looking forward to this. It's just that... And let me just say... My problem with the cinematic has nothing to do with its quality. As usual, Blizzard's cinematic team is phenomenal. It was another phenomenal expan uh, um, <laughs> expansion cinematic. And, you know, Blizzard has always done incredible cinematics, and once again, it was an amazing cinematic. It's just hard to see and like that with the direction it went. So, I've been very clear about two things. I hate Sylvanas, and I'm a big fan of the Lich King and the Scourge, like, in general, like, as concepts, like, each one, and, like, as, as factions and villains and such. You know, you know, if you know all the lore about the Scourge and the Lich King, which I, you know, I've even gotten into debates with, because now that's even being debated, because apparently they're making changes to it. Because apparently, that's, that is one thing I'm actually not entirely okay for now about Shadowlands, is that they are making retcons to the lore. They're even saying that the Chronicles books are not, as we referred to, you know, Word of God. You know, from the author of This Is What Is, as opposed to it being an in-game book, you know. Which I'm not okay with, because when the Chronicles books came out, it was... Uh, advertised that these books were basically the word of God as a, you know, in regards to the lore of the setting. You know, like, this is directly from the author of this is what happened and happened, you know, and this is such and such, as opposed to this is written by Khadgar archiving what happened long ago. You know, an in-game um, setting lore book like that. They're retconning that stuff. Um, saying now that the Chronicles books are from the perspective of a titan or whatever. And because of this expansion, they're changing the lore about uh, the Lich King. Uh, where not j just the Helm of Domination came from, but also where Frostmourne came from. <sighs> I understand the explanation about why they had Sylvanas just basically not only wipe out a Scourge army or just the Scourge Army that was there on her own, but then also one-on-one -on -one the Lich King easily, which two problems I have with that. One, why was that all the Scourge that was there, and why didn't the Lich King just keep calling more and more? He can, he has control over the, the Scourge on the entire planet, and you're telling me that was all the Scourge that he could muster in Northrend alone just to come and stop Sylvanas? <sighs> 
and you know, I find you know people were talking about how oh, if that was Arthas with Frostmourne, he would have. I mean, that is true because we saw it happen in the Halls of Reflection dungeon. Arthas, uh, or rather, the Second Lich King with Frostmourne did beat Sylvanas. <laughs> you know, um, if you play Horde anyway, if you play Alliance, it's Jaina. But you got you get my point. And I just had a big problem with how easily the you know the third Lich King was defeated. Plus, it also it makes many of the things that happened in Legion, if you played a Death Knight and did the entire Death Knight campaign with all the stuff the third Lich King was involved in and had you involved in as well, kind of irrelevant. You know, all that stuff that happened in the campaign is now kind of pointless. Because then, it's not only that she also removed the helm from Bolvar, but then she destroys the helm. Now, whether or not it's actually supposed to all of a sudden just break the barrier between Azeroth and the Shadowlands, that's a whole nother discussion. But I was not happy after seeing that cinematic, you know. I will say this, though. The fact that Bolvar, because you could tell it was Bolvar, uh, based on the voice I heard in the cinematic and the fact that he, you know, the, the, the game pl or rather the announcement trailer starts off with the helm in half just laying there. And he's talking about how he failed at his job as the, the jailer of the damned and about what Sylvanas has just done. The fact that he narrated that trailer tells me he's going to be relevant throughout the expansion. Because Cadgar narrated the one for Legion, Jaina narrated the one for BFA, um, Grom narrated the one for Warlords, but that was kind of a weird one. Um, but my point is that whoever has been the narrator of the of the announcement trailer has then been involved because Cadgar was involved throughout all of Legion. Jaina, of course, was involved throughout all of BFA, and BFA hasn't even officially finished yet because 8.3 hasn't officially come out yet. Um, so that tells me Bolvar is going to be very relevant throughout the expansion, and I am looking forward to that. I am very much looking forward to the idea of going through the Shadowlands with Bolvar who has the knowledge of what's going on in the Shadowlands through his time wearing the helm, basically as our tour guide, you know? And I like that. I like the idea that we're going to be in involved with Bolvar, interacting with him a lot throughout that expansion. But l let me just say this. By the end of that expansion, Shadowlands, the helm better get reforged and better be put back on Bolvar's head. Or maybe not even on Bolvar, just in general. I don't want this to be the the end of the Lich King because that is the one of the worst possible ways that you can get rid of the Lich King character, in my opinion. You don't have an iconic character like the Lich King. Not Arthas. I'm not talking about Arthas. I'm talking about the Lich King in general. You know, the being that was the essence and spirit of the Lich King that was made by Kill Jaden through what he did to Ner'zhul's spirit with the Helm of Domination, which now they're saying, instead of that it was forged by the Nathrezim, that it was actually stolen by the Nathrezim because it was made in the Shadowlands, and it... <sighs> Yeah, I have I have to wait and see where this all goes, but initially I am not in, entirely enthusiastic about it, but this better not be the end of the Lich King. The Lich King better be back by the end of the Shadowlands, otherwise I may never forgive Blizzard for 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 this. It's not that they got just that they got rid of the Lich King; it's how they got rid of the Lich King. It's how they killed him off. It's not just that you kill off a, a beloved character or a fan favorite character; it's how you kill them off. And one of my favorite examples of this is Zeratul in Starcraft. Zeratul was a very beloved fan fan favorite character but i was okay with how uh he died in legacy of the void because it was an awesome way for him to go out it was so cool and so well done and it it was a self-sacrifice one another of my favorite examples is a more recent one avengers endgame i was of course sad like everyone else to see iron man tony stark go out but 
I was okay with it because it was an awesome self-sacrifice way for him to go out. There are ways, proper ways to handle killing off a beloved character. The way they did that to the Lich King in this cin Shadowland cinematic is not one of them. And, I'm, and quite frankly, I'm getting very sick and tired of Sylvanas being in all these cinematics, getting all this attention. She... <laughs> I get that she's basically the poster girl right now for WoW, but she needs like she needs to be gotten rid of like she needs to be killed off at this point that's a character now that you know it's like garrosh it's like oh can we please kill off this character at this point <laughs> you know um so those are my thoughts that that's kind of like my my thoughts on uh the stuff involving the Lich King and Shadowlands and all that stuff. So, anyways, now that I finally got that off my chest, let's see if I can finish this off. We are driven by a single purpose. Retribution. Have you obtained the Shards of the Frozen Throne, Paladin? These should suffice. Speak to me when Shadow's Edge has been thoroughly empowered, and I will attempt its completion. My lord, Darien Mogreen speaks to you purposely. Purposefully. Shadow's Edge is, is prepared to receive its final endowment of power. The time has come to attempt the forging of Shadowmorn. Stand clear, Paladin, and steady yourself. The Knights of the Adam Blade will not It is complete. complete. Where most would falter, you have overcome. By the way, this is not the only reward for this questline. You have withstood the torment of the Lich King himself, and now Shadowmorn is yours. Go now. Wield this mighty weapon, and direct the countless living souls that empower it. Go now, and defeat the Prince of Darkness. Harness your hate. Make it useful. Congratulations, Paladin. Against insurmountable odds, you have weathered the storm. I trust that you shall find your reward proportionate to your conviction. Legendary two-handed axe, Shadowmorn. Your melee attacks have a chance to drain a soul fragment, granting you four strength. When you have acquired ten soul fragments, you will unleash Chaos Bane, dealing 68 shadow damage split between all enemies within 15 yards and granting you 39 strength for 10 seconds. So, see, it even says it's limited to, to the classes Warrior, Paladin, and Death Knight. So if it, even if it's true that hunters can wield two-handed axes, they can't. They're not allowed to. It's restricted. So. <sighs> the Lich King's last stand. Shadow Morn. Go ahead and uh, equip that bad boy. There it is. It's finally mine. My own Shadowmorn. A newly forged weapon already steeped in this world's history, reborn in, un, into an unrivaled destiny. With this weapon, you bear a solemn responsibility, and the time to carry out that charge is at hand. Take this weapon of myth and legend and march on the enemy. Avenge the countless heroes lost in his merciless campaign. Bring to rest... Bring rest to their tortured souls. Steal yourself, Paladin, and guide Shadowmorn to fulfill the purpose of its creation. Wants you to kill the Lich King. A shadow of hope One remains. more time. And I'm going to show you guys doing that. I'll probably even just go ahead and cut here to when we face the Lich King. I'm going to go through the rest of the raid. And I'll just cut here. And uh, when we come back... I will show you guys the Lich King counter one more time because, of course, why wouldn't I? And, 
I will show you what happens when you finish off this qu this quest here and what some of the final rewards are for this entire quest line. So I will be right back. All right, guys, here we are at the Frozen Throne once more. This is the effect from uh, Shadowmourne. That soul fragments thing? Yeah, that's the visual effect. And uh, the Chaos Bane thing, I basically get like, you know, all black. It's almost like, you know, shadow form for a shadow priest. It's a pretty cool looking effect. All right, so before we do this, Let's, of course, do what has always been one of my favorite things to do whenever I do this encounter. All the way up here. Hello, Lich King. And hello, Bovar. It's a shame I don't have the selfie camera. I'd love to, I'd love to be able to do selfies, doing this. But all right, let's do this. I know a lot of people get tired of this role play, but I personally never get tired of it. But it's mainly because of Matt, you know, so, Matthew, Michael McConaughey's incredible voice actor. And throw myself at your mercy, Fordring. We'll grant you a swift death, Arthas. More than can be said for the thousands you've tortured and slain. You'll learn of that firsthand. When my work is complete, you will beg for mercy. And I will deny you your anguished cries. Will be testament to my unbridled power. You can see the similarities between them. Look at that. So be Look five, that. Five, four, three, Attack! two, one. I'll keep you alive to witness the end for a break. I would not want the lights Beware. That's why he didn't tell the Scourge to just go out and destroy the world. For those who always Watch keep wondering. Now, as I raise them from the dead to become masters of the Scourge, they will shroud this world in chaos and destruction. Azeroth's fall will come at their hands, and you will be the first to die. <laughs> I delight in the irony. Light, grant me one final blessing. Give me the strength to shatter these bonds. No! 
No more lives will be consumed by your hatred! Free! At last! It is over, my son. This is the moment of reckoning. Rise up, champions of the light! Though I have heard we may be seeing you again in Shadowlands. Oh, hey, I got the pet. Oh, right here, the sealed chest. Personal property. You can detect no hinges or openings on this box. Were it not for the shifting of items inside, it could easily be mistaken for a solid metal. If anyone could know the method of its opening, it would be High Lord Mograine. Bring the sealed chest to High Lord Darien Mograin in Ice Crown Citadel. I didn't realize that that's what I was going to get. This right here. Let me go ahead and uh, make sure that these are both equal. So a weird thing, I, I guess this is still a, this may be a bug, but whenever you finish this fight, you stay in combat mode. It's, it, it's very frustrating, especially if you're wanting to use portals to go somewhere, so. All right. So I am going to step outside for just a moment, just to get out of this, because I don't want to be stuck in this. And then I'm going to come right back in and we'll turn both of those in. You know, it's funny, like, we always used to speculate, you know, when he said, I see only darkness before me. And the, I, you know, we were told that where Arthas was all this time was the darkness, which is the worst place. Which is also where Sylvanas went after she... Because after this, Sylvanas just, you know, threw herself off the top of Ice Crown, committed suicide. That's where she ended up when she thought she was going to the light. And now we're finding out from the Shadowlands expansion that no, it's not just, it's not the darkness. It's this place um, that the Jailer is running, you know, this prison place. Apparently that's where Arthas is, and many of us are speculating that we are more than likely going to see him there. In the next in Shadowlands, but anyways, let's turn not the lost. Not yet. So, at last, it is done. May the people of Azeroth remember our deeds here forevermore. May the sacrifices of so many burn in their hearts eternally. May they never fail to risk mortal peril in the face of great evil. After tracing a complex pattern of runes on each of the box's surfaces, the outline of a lid appears, and a click echoes through the chamber. Here you are, Blood Elf. We are eternal. We are unyielding. So this gets you a few items that are pretty relevant to the people right over there. Jaina's Locket. This locket opens to reveal an engraved image of Jaina Proudmore. Oh, gosh, I'm already anticipating her reaction. Alexandros's soul shard. Could it be? Arthas's training sword. A simple, heavily worn blade. Badge of the Silver Hand. A medal given upon acceptance to the Knights of the Silver Hand. And the blood of Sylvanas. A vial of blood taken from the dying Sylvanas Windrunner. So, as you can imagine, each of these are relevant items to five different people here. Let's start off, of course, right here with Darian. For us, there is no peace. 
no rest. Apparently, these the each of these give off a quest. What is that that you hold, Paladin? It calls out to me, stirring feelings that I thought to be long dead. Just a reminder: Alexandros is Darian's father, the you know the original Ashbringer. So, and this is going to be one of the rewards I get here: a mount. So it's this right here, this crim this uh mount right here. It's, what's funny is I see this available in the auction house and, you know, for a lot of gold. I'm like, why don't you just do the quest line? And then I remember, oh, that's right. Not everyone plays multiple characters where they would actually want to do these quest lines and such. Impossible. Father? Is it you? You have done me a great service, hero. I offer you the reins of my faithful steed. Do with it as you please, but do not forget those that assisted you in this monumental feat. The Crimson Death. We must forge our own destiny. Yay! I'll go ahead. Right, right. Father! There you are. I'm gonna go ahead and favorite you. Very nice. My son. There he is. At last. I am able to lay my eyes upon you again. Father, I... I feared for your... your sanity. The Lich King tormented me without end, Dari. Endlessly, he sought to break my will, to force me to serve him. To bind me to his blade, finally. When events demanded his full attention, he left me. The one memory I clung to, Daria. The one thought that kept me from giving in. It was your sacrifice, my son. That again saved me from eternal peril. Father, for you, I would give my life a thousand times. And he vanishes. Finally free. Remember, uh, at a, there was a time back in Vanilla, in Noxramus, where he was one of the four horsemen with the corrupted Ashbringer. And remember, if you find his son, not not Darian, the other one, the one with the, who was with the Scarlet Crusade, who backstabbed him. You know, that event where if you take the Corrupted Ashbringer there, that Alexandro shows up and actually kills him. Yeah. So now he's finally free. And remember, this is a a completion of what happened back in the Death Knight starter zone at Light's Hope Chapel, where Alexandro showed up and Darian realized what was going on. This basically is the conclusion of that story arc with Darian Mograine. Which, you know, then, you know, the stuff that happens in Legion, but that's not, that's not important right now. So then there are four other people here. And no, I'm not talking about Garrosh. <laughs> uh, you know what? I want to get, I want to get Sylvanas out of the way. Because, well, you guys know I hate Sylvanas. What are we if not slaves to this torment? Yeah, 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 you're you're depressed and goth and emo and everyone should die because you're dead and everyone else should die as well, right? Whatever. <sighs> she silently reflects for a moment before returning her gaze to you. You have done me a great service, hero. I offer you the boon of the Banshee Queen. Do with it as you please, but do not forget those that assisted you in this monumental feat. Her music box. It's a toy. Summon Sylvanas's Lamenters. Which has, you know, I guess has to do with that uh, cutscene. So, it is done. I had not dared to trust my senses. Too many times has the Lich King made me to be a fool. Finally, he has been made to pay for the atrocities he imposed upon my people. 
May Azeroth never fail to remember the horrible price we paid for our weakness, for our pride. But what now, hero? What of those freed from his grasp, but still shackled to their mortal coils? Leave me. I have much to ponder. A reminder, she says she has much to ponder, and then after this she goes to the top of Ice Crown and just throws herself off the top and commits suicide. That was what she ended up deciding. I'm just, just, just saying. Curious about this toy. Where is it? There you are. Oh, they're singing the music from that cutscene. Alright, so there's three left. Uther, Muradin, and Jaina. I wanna save Jaina for last, because she may get she may get to me. So let's let's do Uther next. How may I be of service? badge of the silver hand. Uther stares at the metal, speechless for a moment. Arthas's metal. I remember well the day that I presented it to him. You have done me a great service, hero. My soul may now rest in peace. I offer you a memory lost in time. Do with it as you please, but do not forget those that assisted you in this monumental feat. Another aside, it is said that Uther is going to also be in the Shadowlands expansion, as we will be encountering him in the area that is basically the light of the Shadowlands, but that's for another day. Tabard of the Light. Arthas. Alas, hero of Azeroth, you give me a greater gift than you know. Long have I struggled to forgive the Prince for his terrible transgressions. My soul has been racked with unbearable anxiety, dark thoughts, distancing me from the light. I recall clearly the gleam of pride in his eye as he stood before me eager to defeat the enemies of the light. Eager to defend his people no matter the cost. It is this memory of Arthas that I choose to keep in my heart. I shall always be in your debt, friend. Thank you. You're welcome, Uther. Suffuses the wearer with the light. favorite that very nice all right next up my man muradin bronzebeard hey muradin what you got there blood elf i i know this blade and i will treasure it always a moment of time that will be lost forever. You have done me a great service, hero. I offer you a gift from the Frostborn Dwarves. Do with it as you please, but do not forget those that assisted you in this mon monumental feat. A toy, Murden's favor. Assume the form of a Frost Dwarf for ten minutes. I will always count you as a brother. How I miss those endless days in Lordaeron. Sharpening your skill with this dull blade. Forging you into a weapon meant to withstand the demands of a great destiny. 
You sure put them skills to use, didn't you, lad? If only I'd been able to stop you that day. How different things might have been. If only I'd have never discovered that accursed blade. Farewell, Arthas. My brother. Gosh. Oh, man. You know, Muradin was perhaps more of a father figure for Arthas than even Terranus was. Not to say that Terranus was a bad father, but you know how it probably was with him being the king and Arthas being the prince and him having to, you know, you know, do his duties as a king over a, an entire kingdom. And Muradin was, you know, mainly able to just be there, just help train him and, you know, throughout his time growing up from a young boy to a young man. Um, Muradin was there for a lot of Arthas's childhood. Basically, you know, and Arthas really did look up to Muradin as a father figure. <sighs> so sad. All right. Let's add that as well as a favorite. Let me go ahead and check this out. Ha! There we go. All right, last but not least. Gosh. This is going to get to me because, as I've probably already said, I read the book Arthas Rise of the Lich King, and the f whole first portion about, you know, throughout the book, the the relationship between Arthas and Jaina, and just seeing no seeing where it was and how it ended up, it just ugh. This is the locket that Arthas had of her when they were together, and. The fact that he Shh, still has I'm it. To think here. Yes, Paladin? How can I assist you? What? How did you manage to come by this? You have done me a great service, hero. My heart could not bear to keep this locket. But I will place an enchantment upon it so that you may find it useful. Do with it as you please, but... Do not forget those that assist you in this monumental feat. Creates a portal, teleporting group members that use it to Dalaran. That's a very useful toy. Actually, is it a, is it a toy? Or is it a... Uh, I'll, I'll check in a moment. But just listen to Gina's reaction. What's this? He... He kept it. All this time, he kept it. I knew. I sensed a part of him still alive, trapped, struggling. Oh, Arthas. Perhaps, perhaps he might someday remember what he once was. By the light, may he at last find rest, free from the icy grip of that terrible blade. He is, but he is, he, based on what we know, he has been, still has been a prisoner all this time. Uh, he's been a prisoner in the Shadowland since this. Gosh, I hope we get him out of there in Shadowlands. I really hope that that's what we get to do. I'm sorry, but when you, when you see where they were, I just, I want these two to have a happily ever after. After all the, after everything that happened in the book before Warcraft 3, and then of course what did happen in Warcraft 3, but the book really did touch upon just how much these two truly cared for each other. And to see, you know, the extra stuff that they had in the book that was not in Warcraft 3 about their relationship and, you know, the how Arthas truly felt about Jaina, you know, leaving him and abandoning him at uh, Stratholme, just, ugh, it's heartbreaking. Huh. So, I can't equip this, it's just an item I can carry around. Okay. And I can just take it myself. 
So that is actually a really useful item to have. It's a shame that it seems like it's not an actual toy. If this was a toy, that'd be like basically a free portal to be able to use to ever go to Dalran and Northrend. But it looks like it's just an item I carry with me, which I guess is fine. By the way, I wanted to show this off for a moment. Yes, I have the Scythe of the Unmaker from Argus. Mythic Argus. It is the blue one, but boy was I happy when this dropped for me. So. So. Gosh. Oh, man. So. I'm wearing the Lightbringer tabard. So that is the finale of the quest line for this two-handed axe Shadow Morn. Um, so just love that you know that part there makes it show that it really is like a kindred uh, sister weapon, so to speak, of of uh, Frostmore. Just awesome. Uh, I'm glad I'll be able to have this unlocked as a transmog now once uh, that becomes available. So. It is a long quest line that is going to require you to get a few other people, but. Uh, you know, if you like Wrath, if you like the Lich King, if you like Frostmourne, and if you like the you know the st the story and the lore involving uh, Arthas, Jaina, Murid, and all that, um, definitely recommend making uh, a Paladin, Warrior, or Death Knight to be able to um, acquire this and experience this quest line. So, I really enjoyed that. It was a little of a, a bit of a task involving you know doing the thing of, you know, getting the unholy imbued into Shadow's Edge uh, with Putricide, controlling the, you know, that was a bit annoying. Once I got the, you know, the people doing the one with uh, the blood, you know, the biting, that wasn't all that, you know, bad. But boy, am I glad I, I am able to now check this off the list of stuff I've been doing that I can finally be able to remove. So now I have the entire 25 heroic set for my paladin. I have Invincible. I have Shadowmorn. Now that I have Shadowmorn, I don't know if there's really any more reasons other than transmogs, certain transmogs, um, to go back to Ice Crown. So that may end up being one of the very last times I ever do Ice Crown Citadel, at least to collect stuff. You know, who knows? I never mind going going back. Ice Crown, so it's a home away from home, so to speak. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you guys next time.